Hey guys, what's up? It's Stephanie, and I'm here with a video. Um, in this video, I wanted to talk about something that God has been um, revealing to me recently in my walk with Him. And um, I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys because I know there might be some people out there who are going through the same thing or who might be faced with the same thing pretty soon in their walks with God. Um, so just an overview of my walk with God. I was in the world, being worldly, being rebellious, and I was hanging around the wrong people for who God ordained me to be, but the right people in that season of my life. Um, because God used those people um, to bring me to where I am today. He used, he just used, he used them, you know, what? Satan meant for evil, God turned it around for my good. It strengthened me, it made me wiser, it made me stronger, and it led me towards God, God's purpose for my life. Um, but then there came a time when God wanted me in solitude. He wanted me to remove myself from hanging around a bunch of people and friends and groups and just always being out out there and going out and doing all these different things and different activities um, with my friends. And he wanted to get me alone and spend time with me alone. And he got me there. And that's when I got the intimacy. And that's when he really drew me into his presence and appreciating his presence and appreciating doing work for his kingdom. And he in that time when I was by myself, he redirected my focus to be on him. And a lot of the videos that I do are based on those stages of my life where I was in the world and hanging around too many people and people that weren't just, weren't the people that God ordained for me to be in the, in the future seasons of my life. And um, now I'm going to do a video and I'm going to progress because I'm also hoping that those of you that are watching these videos are also progressing in your walks. So once God has gotten you into his into solitude with him and you have, are spending time with him and, you know, you removed all the baggage and the negativity out of your life, that could be negative energy, that could be negative people that could be negative habit habits um negative thoughts whatever the case may be negative practices um god has been teaching me this i got so accustomed to the safety i felt in my solitude that that was actually beginning to stagnate me in my walk with god and with that being said, I want to share this with you guys. When Jesus was down here on this earth, he did not go after the will of God on his own. He surrounded himself. He specifically handpicked 12 individuals that would be around him, that he would call his disciples, that he would teach, that he would help grow and mature um, to basically carry on the torch after his time on earth was up. And so God formed serious and strong bonds with other individuals while he was down here. And I say that to say, God did not make us to stay in solitude. When he made Adam, he made him first by himself, but then he saw that he needed a, com a companion. And so he made Eve. And even when Jesus was down here, he didn't go after the will of God by himself. He he found 12 people that he really tr trusted and trusted with the work of the Father. And it's the same with you guys. There is a power when we could connect with other people and get God's will done. So if you're in that stage of solitude where you're appreciating God's presence on your own. That is a beautiful place to be. But God does not want you to be stagnant in your walk. He wants you to move forward. And he wants you to go. He wants you to 
be open to building deep relationships to the people that he has chosen to be in your life for this particular season. Um, and I had to share this with you guys because by no means do I want the things that I'm saying in the videos that I'm doing to be repetitive and to keep you at one point. If God has serious, serious plans in your purpose, you cannot get all that accomplished on your own. And that was the thing with me, the way that I think, I think so individual, like individualistically, like to the point where if somebody comes and prophesies in my life and says that, hey, Stephanie, you're going to do this. God is going to use you for this. I automatically think that I'm going to do it on my own. And of course, with God's help, I acknowledge that. But I automatically think that I'm going to do it on my own. And sometimes that'll lead me to get overwhelmed. But the thing is, you guys, God, God's not going to put more on you than you can bear. God has big plans in, stores for, in store for your life. But he wants you to accomplish those things, not necessarily on your own. There are people that he's going to be placing in your life to help you accomplish those things and to help you move from stage A in your walk with God to stage B in your walk with God. And there's different lessons that we learn and different requirements for different seasons that we're in in our walk with God. And those people that are going to get you from point A to point B, I don't want you guys, and God definitely does not want you to reject these individuals. You get what I'm saying? When they come into your life, he wants you to be able to discern and to recognize these people and to welcome them in. You get what I'm saying? When, when Jesus went after the disciples, they were willing to leave their lives behind and to follow this man that, you know, they didn't really know too, too much about, but they had that faith to to leave their families behind, their jobs behind, and to just follow him. And that is an amazing thing, you guys. And the same faith that the disciples had in entrusting Jesus when he came into their lives is the same faith you guys need to have in the people that Jesus ordained to be in your lives to help you accomplish your purpose for his kingdom. You know, we weren't called to do everything on our own. We weren't called to do everything on our own. Majority, everything that has been done that is great has been done with multiple people, not just one person. Even God needs us to advance his kingdom down here. Satan has his minions and his followers that he uses to do whatever, to, to kill, steal, destroy individuals down here. So I just want to open you guys' eyes to the fact that we need, we need other people. We need people. We need to build relationships and connections. We weren't built to live life alone and to do everything on our own. There are some things that we were ordained to do on our own, and there are other things that we were ordained to do with a group of people or with other people. You know what I'm saying? In the word, even God says himself, when two or three are gathered, there I am in, in the midst. You get what I'm saying? So that just goes to show you the power in relationships. And that just goes to show you the power in fellowships, um, fellowshipping with people. Um, so definitely don't want you guys to reject um, somebody that may be ordained in your life due to fear, and I can even speak for myself, um, after dealing with a lot of crazy individuals in my life, I was kind of fed up and done with people, um, I didn't, I was dealing with a lot of people that were phony in some respects, and people that weren't loyal to me, people that were ready to switch up just based off of he, she, he say, she say, rather than you know, rock with me or even hearing me out first. But, um, and that led me to really isolate myself and not be trusting of others. But God used that for his good and his glory um, at that time, because like I said, he, he 
use that stage of my life to allow me to appreciate spending time with him on my own. But that's just for a season. And a lot of times when God can be asking you or pushing you and leading you to move into that next stage of your walk with God, Satan can begin to use your level of comfort with where you are, or he can be begin to use that fear that you had that God initially used for his glory. He can begin to use that to keep you stagnant in your walk with God. And that's a dangerous thing because if you're stagnant, then you're not going anywhere. And if you're not going anywhere, what are you accomplishing? What are you getting done? How are you growing? How are you reaching? How are you how how are you improving yourselves in the lives of others? You get what I'm saying? So with all that being said, you guys, um, to those of you that are out there and you know you're starting to feel that you are outgrowing that stage that you're in, God could be trying to take you to the next level. And I'm here doing this video to tell you not to allow Satan to keep you stagnant in your walk with God. Because we're all down here and we're supposed to make ourselves available to be used by God, to be used by Jesus, to advance Jesus's kingdom down here. And the thing about it is when you become stagnant for too long, when you allow the fear of moving on to the next step or the fear of trusting people or the fear of doing something different or starting something new, when you let that fear sink in, you begin to make yourself unavailable to be used by God. And that is a dangerous and scary thing because that's that's a point of us being down here. If you're chosen by God, then you're chosen to do things for his kingdom. You're chosen to win souls for his kingdom, for his glory. You're chosen to help to, to illustrate the, the power and the glory of God. So... If you're not being used for that, then why are you here? And if you're not being used by God, then who are you going to be used by? So with all that being said, you guys, I just wanted to do this video to encourage those of you that are out there. And God is calling you to move into that next step and never feel like you need to do things for his kingdom on your own. There's so much power in connecting with other individuals that God has ordained for your life. There's so much power. Nobody can accomplish greatness on their own. Nobody. If Jesus himself came down here and gave us a blueprint on how to go after our purpose in God and how to accomplish things for God's kingdom, then that in and of itself just shows us God came down here and he had 12 disciples rocking with him and helping him. And even the disciples, when they went into different communities and into different cities, they were relying on other individuals in those cities to help feed them, clothe them and provide them with shelter. We were not called to do anything by ourselves. So do not block your blessing and do not block that ordained friendship that God may have in store for you. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's Stephanie. Be blessed. Be encouraged, guys. Um, and step out on faith and move towards that next stage in your walk with God.